So a few weeks ago, an uh, investor visits our office in Mason, Ohio, asks his run-of-the-mill questions, trying to get a better idea of the company's business model, the underlying technology that we develop, which is basically the opposite of an MRI. We don't emit a magnetic field to evaluate the structure of the heart. We measure the field that's naturally generated by the heart. At the end, he asks me about team composition. So I give him the rundown. We've got everything from college dropouts to MDs to PhDs and everything in between. We've got industry veterans, we've got actual veterans, and everything in between. As he's leaving the building, he turns back to see the office one more time, laughs, and then tells me, don't take this the wrong way, but you guys are definitely a cult. <laughs> a magnetic field cult. And as I sip my Kool-Aid, I look to him, and ask him why. I'm not saying you're wrong, you're absolutely right, but why? And he tells me everyone clearly comes from different walks of life, like you just attested to, but everyone also looks the exact same. For crying out loud, everyone is wearing the exact same Patagonia sweater with the Geneticist logo on it. And so I tell him, I mean, it's just a, it's a comfy sweater, that's what it is. <laughs> but of course, it's not about the sweater. As a founder, you're constantly thinking about your company's culture, how best to cultivate that culture. Because at the end of the day, our people are our strongest competitive advantage. Our people are why we will succeed or not succeed. And so our story starts in Mason, Ohio, in the summer of 2013. This was the summer before my freshman year at Ohio State, at a bonfire at a friend's house in Mason. And the entire summer before, I had been sketching ideas in a notebook. The notebook starts with the title, The Next Generation of Medical Imaging, with exclamation marks, all caps, and underlines. Every time I tell this story, my co-founders always tell me, you're a little bit dramatic. <laughs> but all that was in this notebook was a bunch of put-together, last-minute ideas on how we might be able to measure some signal coming from the chest and map that back down to the individual cells that gave rise to that signal and that we could use this information to predict heart attacks or stroke well before these conditions become symptomatic. Again, nothing was fleshed out, but the one thing we did have fleshed out was we had a cool company name, Geneticist. It was just the right amount of nerdy, and it rolls off the tongue. So I felt that that was the only thing I really needed to start a company. <laughs> of course, that makes complete sense, so I told my friends I was going to pitch them this fabulous new idea at the bonfire, and I didn't know this at the time, but this was the biggest pitch of my life. It wasn't the money on the line, there was none. Uh, it wasn't the press on the line, there was none. It was the pitch that won me my co-founders, Vineeth and Manny, who I went to Mason High School with. And so we decided to start this company. The next week, I go to Ohio State, my freshman year, Lincoln Tower, and I realized we don't know how to start a business. We don't even know how to incorporate the business in the state of Ohio. And starting to come to terms with the fact that maybe we're in over our heads just a little bit. And so I remember talking to my dad about this. He's in the audience today. And explicitly mentioned that I'm a little nervous that I took on too much and that I don't really know where to start. The next week, the business was incorporated in the state of Ohio. My dad knew that the spark was there and that he just had to do a little bit of an irreversible action to make sure that that spark stayed alive. And so now we have a cool company name, and that company is incorporated in the state of Ohio. What are we going to build, and how are we going to build it? I spent the next year with my co-founders trying to answer that question. And we became a dorm room startup. And in our literature reviews, we came, we came to the same two options every single time. We could choose option A, which was the path less traveled, which would mean we would take off the component technology, repurpose it, and ship it right out to hospitals after FDA approvals and whatnot. Felt a little bit uninspired. On the other side of it, we could embark on the path less traveled, which would be a 10-year research journey where we don't even know where we're beginning, and we certainly don't know where we're going to end. That's also not very enticing. Um, 
I'm clearly getting up there in age, so I don't know if I've got the 10 years to put into that research journey. So one day as we were in Park Stradley Hall, you're right, I've upgraded, I've gone from Lincoln to Park Strad. <laughs> uh, Manny and I are in the study room by the whiteboard, beneath calls, we're going through the literature as we usually do, and we see this term, magnetic current. And as soon as we read that term, we realize there's an option C, none of the above. And in that option, we can take science that's existed for decades, and we can take that science which has only been exclusively used in the fields of research and actually enable it to improve the lives of millions of patients. And so we embark on this journey. We know now what we're going to build. We have a cool company name. We're you know, incorporated in the state of Ohio. Now it's time to start building. So we won a quarter million dollars in a business idea competition in, in Buffalo, New York. Condition was that we relocate to Buffalo for a year. And so we decided it was time to upgrade our office because now we've got a little bit of cash. So we literally doubled our size. We went from Park Stradley Hall to a two-bedroom apartment in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> and at peak, we had eight people in that two-bedroom apartment, including my family. My family moved out there with us, and they made sure that the meals were cooked so that by the time we were done building that day, we could eat. And so, hopefully you're starting to see some of the cult aspects of this come together. <laughs> but uh, now we know what we're building. We build, we build, we build. And at the end of our year in Buffalo, we have a software prototype. We also have zero dollars in our bank account. And so, it's time to go back to Ohio State. It's time to downgrade again to a dorm room startup because we don't have any money in the bank account. But we do have that software prototype. So we partnered with the Mayo Clinic. They gave us access to 30 patients worth of data, which we would then process in our prototype. Here's the issue. That 30 patients worth of data, each patient has about 100 timestamps worth of information to process. That's 3,000 timestamps. We had zero dollars in the bank. We don't have servers to be able to process that data. We could only afford two servers with four processing windows each. So that's eight processors. Eight processors handle eight timestamps at a time, and it takes 10 minutes to process those. That doesn't include the upload, download, upload, download times, and inevitably the number of times that we were going to even mess up the upload, download, which was many times. So all together, it was about 100 hours of manual processing. Notably, we're also taking 17 credit hours of coursework. Um, we actually started mapping our body temperatures and quickly learned that our body temperatures were really hovering about 100 degrees the entire semester. Pretty sure Manny had bronchitis the entire semester. It was a lot of fun. But there was one guy at the end of it who loved the, the pathway we were taking. He loved the, the company's entrepreneurial spirit, and he loved the data that was coming out of it. And that was Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban invested in the company. But as you can tell, in, in this particular cult, we're not very lavish about our headquarters. So our next upgrade, as you can see here, is Thompson Library. <laughs> so we started working at a Thompson Library in the summer of 2016. And every morning when we would come in, we would put a note on the window saying, yes, we're open because we wanted to feel like we were a real business. <laughs> and in this conference room, we're now designing this technology to measure the heart's magnetic fields. Well, there's a problem. The heart's magnetic fields are really small, about a million times smaller than the Earth's magnetic field. So that means you have to nullify all the noise in the environment from the Earth, and you have to design equipment that makes it so that you're not introducing any new noise inside the device. Here's the issue. Everything gives off a magnetic field. Stainless steel, even, as we later learned, aluminum. Aluminum, as you can see in that, the, the rightmost image, we're pushing this bed made of aluminum into this magnetic shield. It looks awesome, looks medical great, doesn't work. Aluminum creates massive amounts of noise in the areas where there was welding. 
And so we had to redesign a wooden bed. And that was working fine, but it's a wooden bed. <laughs> and so over the months, we became that company, the company that was just going to do it. Everything was against us. This is certainly a needle in a haystack problem. And option C, none of the above, is a tough option to choose here. But it's the only option that's going to yield results that can actually improve patient lives. And this was the end result. We installed our first system, medical grade, in a hospital in Detroit, Michigan, in July of 2017. It scanned several hundred patients at this point. And you know, my co-founders and I left Ohio State to build this company full time. And we've always chosen option C, none of the above, when presented with the path less traveled versus the path more traveled. And it's because we had the insert word here, stupidity, brilliance, whatever you think. It's because we had those things, those character traits, to choose option C, none of the above, that were called the magnetic field cult. And it's because we're the magnetic field cult that we actually have a shot at making the world a healthier place to live. Thank you.